Hi, my name is Colin. So, um, as you guys know, the theme for this um, this year's TEDx is generational echoes. This type of speech, those with assigned themes, acquires a creative interpretation of a big idea. To do that, what I did was to open Google and type generation definition. And then open another tab and type echo definition, even before looking at the result for the first one. Generation was defined, all of the people born and living at about the same time regarded collectively. I was like, okay, that's about what I thought. And I commend W the tab. Okay. My dear Google said, an echo is a sound or series of sounds caused by the reflection of sound waves from a surface back to the listener. That sounded a bit too scientific to me to relate it with what's supposed to be a somewhat philosophical speech. Then, an interesting story I read as an um, elementary school student came up in my head. Echo, in Greek mythology, is a mountain nymph. A, mount a nymph is something like a human-sized fairy. Echo protects Zeus's amours, who was a friend nymph of Echo, by making an endless chatter um, to Hera, Zeus's wife. Hera, irritated and frustrated that she couldn't strike the scene, deprives Echo of speech, except for the ability, ability to repeat the last words of another. Echo falls in love with Narcissus, who loved himself and only him till the moment of his death. When Narcissus rejects Echo, Echo remains in a cave of humiliation. Her fading death left only her voice that repeats the last, word, the, the, the last words of another. I love this story not only because it's something to share with TEDx listeners, but also because it tells me about something, a problem that I find in the world. Hera, being an almighty goddess, used her power to bring a tragedy to the little nymph's tale. This sounded familiar to me. It was Hera was the society, and Echo, the innocent little, little nymph, was the, were the students. It's a massive cliche that a student comes up on stage and talks about the problem of education in this society and how the school pressures students to think in a certain way. Where I'm getting today is quite similar. I sincerely agree that there are flaws in how I am, we are educated today. And the biggest flaw, I think it's, it's inflexibility. It's not supposed to work. Okay. Inflexibility is the unwillingness to change or compromise. Um, schools underline innovation and growth mindset like a habit to students, but the adults are unwilling to change themselves. I am certain, I am almost certain that most of you have um, experienced a situation where your complaints about um, an unjust decision made by a more powerful being wouldn't change anything. So used to this, most of the times you would just conform to what's fixed without any objection. I have experienced irrational situations like this um, inside and outside of school myself. Usually I backfire at them, however, um, almost never it would change anything. Oftentimes I was forced to quit. Later on, I just quit on my own. However, what I experienced recently was quite different. Long story short, I had a test of several weeks ago. I prepared a lot for it. I reviewed, I read over every corner of the textbook multiple times. I used the study guide to review, and I also used the practice test online to check my progress. When I got the test, I realized it was the same, same practice test I got from online. I was so proud of myself for preparing very well. And I aced it. However, a student brought an issue to the test. A student told the teacher that how some people got to access the practice test same as the real one was unfair, and the teacher decided to redo the test over. When I heard the news, I immediately wrote the teacher how redoing the test itself was unfair. I was almost offended that all my hard work was just being treated as a violation of academic honesty. Some of my friends, told me that um, they're going to, they are just going to redo the test even though they know it's a bit unfair. A lot of my friends told me that uh, we are going to redo the test because whatsoever because it's the teacher's decision. 
I was one of them. I also thought that my objections wouldn't work out well. However, the teacher actually took some time to listen to the student's opinion and overturned the decision. This was unlike any other event. I was shocked. I was shocked that I was shocked. I wasn't the echo this time. When we encounter tragedies in stories and myths, it sounds like a distinct issue. Maybe because it's just a story, or maybe because it always ends in an extreme way like death. We were writing our own tragedies so ordinarily that we didn't even realize it's a tragedy. Get this place. Okay. So there is another meaning, another definition that wasn't of echo that wasn't introduced before. Um, it's like the repetition of um, event, style, feeling. To me, generational echo meant the re repetition of daily tragedies that are transmitted from a generation to another. An intangible burst of pressure that sets limits the new generation to what the past generation has said. I think the whole point of education, okay, that's the second definition. The whole point of education is to um, stop from making the same mistakes, to stop um, making students lose their own voice like, like Echo did. To do that, it is the time to get ourselves more flexible and see beyond the apparent surface. I don't expect all the listeners to wake up the next day and become the best person ever. I understand that I may be, a, I may be a, one of a billion nymphs. What I hope is that my words would serve as a reminder to see if any of us is echoing. Thank you.